from Senegal, West Africa. Like many musicians from around the globe, he decided to move to the UK with its eclectic music scene to present his work and expand his musical horizons. Seko plays the kora, a traditional multi-stringed harp-like instrument common throughout West Africa. Seko comes from a family of griots, traditional hereditary oral historians, praise singers and musicians. Their role corresponds to the historical European minstrel, troubadour or bard. In 2004, the Seko Keita Quartet was founded with Surahata Sasu from Gambia on calabash and percussion, Davide Mantabani from Italy on electric and acoustic bass, and Sami Bichet from Egypt on violin. In December 2006, the quartet went to Senegal and Gambia on tour. It was the first time Seku was back with his own ensemble and playing a kind of music that was likely to be a surprise for the audience there. This film documents the tour which took place, travelling like anyone else in West Africa, by rented van and taxi, resuscitated from European scrapyards, as well as by plane and pirogue. Senegal is located in Western Africa, bordering Guinea, Mali and Mauritania. The Gambia lies entirely within Senegal, which plays a vital role in West Africa's political, economical and cultural landscape, despite its small size and population. It's renowned for its natural beauty, its distinctive cuisine, its inhabitants' hospitality and its international musicians. lasted 14 days between December and January with nine concerts in six different locations in Senegal and Gambia. For Seku, it was a matter of facing the scrutiny of the public as well as of fellow musicians and the whole family for whom music is of core importance. <laughs> Having landed in Banjul, Gambia, the quartet travelled to Zuginshore, capital of the Casamance region in the south of Senegal, and Seku's birthplace. Immediately, they embarked on a three and a half hour journey on the river by Pirog to reach the beautiful island of Caravan, where the river meets the Atlantic Ocean, and where the first concert was to take place. Seku, you are used to play in this country, mm -hmm. in Sweden, in other countries, in Europe, mm -hmm. Americans where you were mm -hmm. very often since you came to, to England mm -hmm. to live. Mm -hmm. But now you are back to play to your own country mm -hmm. with this quartet. How did you feel about it? Well, I was not afraid to bring my music back to Senegal. I was very excited to present the quartet to my friends and family. But somehow, in the back of my mind, I had some doubts, and I was a bit nervous about how the public will react to music that goes beyond the tradition.
With no electricity, phones or internet on the island, organising the gig beforehand entailed two separate day-long trips to book the venue and advertise the show. On the island, the quartet were met by Sheikh Jemé, local promoter, drummer and friend, and they stayed at Eco Caravan, an isolated place perfect for anyone seeking serenity and inspiration. For Saiku, having spent so much time there for exactly those reasons, a brief visit and performance for old friends and locals was a must. It was also an ideal starting point for the tour, peaceful and relaxed. The facilities on the island are basic, and the concert took place in a bare hall, with the power supplied by a generator placed in the field outside. Despite all this, the only problem was having left the mic stands behind on another island. Mark, the quartet's sound engineer, had to get creative, fixing the mics on wooden sticks planted in baskets and bricks. Drumming is the soul of any performance in Casamance, and this case was no exception, with Sheikh Jemé opening the show with his drumming group and local dancers. The audience's joyful participation easily made up for any lack of comfort or sophisticated equipment, and that was to be one of the striking elements we encountered throughout the tour. Here, 
here was a first glimpse of the kind of participation we could expect from the public and the amount of energy, passion and skill everyone seemed to have for rhythm and dance. After the gig on Caravan, the quartet returned to Ziegenshore with the same pirogue and a slight concern with a leak that required frequent intervention with a bucket. To complete the journey, what better than a night landing that required wading in water, carrying all the equipment. A nice change from the usual routine of unloading the van after a gig in London. So you are Seku's cousin? Yes, I am. Seku told me that you are the one who makes his choras. I do. Do you make rather special choras for him? Yes, a bit special for him. And also for the whole family. Would you say he has a personal way of playing the chora? Yes. So as a chora maker, you know the instrument well. And as Seku's cousin and friend, were you pleased or scared to see him come back here to Ziegenshaw with his combination of violin, bass and calabash? Well, really, I was pleased to see Seku coming with his quartet. We can say he has surprised everybody. If I say surprised, it's not the exact word, because we all knew how talented he is. You know, I remember him as a little boy, when he was in school. He used to escape classes to play music. But he always came with the right justifications for teachers. So if I say surprised, it is not the right word. It is someone that has worked very hard for his music, but it is the style that he brought that surprised everybody. So I can't say we were surprised by this original style that he brought back, giving everyone pleasure. A rare style that you can't find here. A style that blends novelty and tradition in a music that you can listen to and dance at the same time. La Cora, elle est très connue au Sénégal. Je n'ai pas présenté la Cora, mais juste en vitesse. C'est de cet instrument est très complet. On le joue la basse, l'accompagnement et nos prévisions en même temps. 
Ça fait un loop. Dès que tu puisses faire ça, là tu peux chanter. It's quick demonstration. Pousse. Gauche. La base. Bass player, you can go home. Main droite. Accompagnement. Today is Tabashki. Tabashki is known in Arabic speaking countries as Ahid al Habkha or Al Ahid al Kabir. Families gather from wherever they have dispersed to for the event. The day starts with the communal morning prayer. This is the most important celebration of the year for Muslims, and it is also the most festive. On this occasion, celebrants traditionally sacrifice a sheep and feast. After the prayer, people ask each other for forgiveness and blessing, and the elderly have a particularly important role in blessing the young, who show their acceptance by responding with an Amen or by tapping their foreheads. Straight after the prayer, Seku is back in his front yard with his family and friends. The quartet is learning and rehearsing a new song for the next show, while the culinary preparations are underway. <laughs> Expanded your um, traditions, even using musicians from your country, you don't have to explain to what to do because they already have the vocabulary. While for me and Sami, it's different. We had to learn from from zero. Mm -hmm. So how is it for you? I mean, it's, it's a kind of a I see like a kind of a compromise for you to involve people who are not speaking the same musical language. Mm -hmm. So that's actually is the benefit higher than, than the trouble? Well, um, there's a right answer and a wrong answer to that, by the way. That's true. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with African musicians would have been less troubles. But working with you guys extended my musical horizon. It's a challenge for all of us including myself, to come from a very different place, to speak a different language, to have a very different musical background, and still be able to create something special. I'm <laughs> 
This is Lindian, the neighborhood where Seku grew up in the family house, surrounded by the griots from his mother's side. And here we meet his grandmother, Bintu Conte, the matriarch of the family. Seku is the son of my daughter, Fatu Bintu Sissoko. He is like a son to me, as he was born into my own hands and weaned on my own milk. Everybody in this family was taught by the grandfather, Jali Kimo Sissoko. He taught them all the secrets of the family's tradition. No one from this family can learn the Kora from another place. Seku was no exception. He very quickly learned all he needed to know. Seku was very inspired by his uncle Solo. Kora is usually played sitting down. Solo was the first to play the Kora standing in Casamance. He was also the first to take the family's musical tradition abroad. Our mission is to transmit the family's Kora knowledge. With Seku, we have fulfilled it. While altering the tradition, he never detracts from its essence. He can only take it further. I know it is in good hands. Travel plays an important part in the life of any musician. The van is often a second home for long periods of time. Hiring vans in this instance wasn't easy. It was unlikely they would turn up on time if they turned up at all, and often the state of the vehicles would have been enough to induce cardiac arrest in any health and safety official back in the UK. Save for some minor fixing, the quartet managed to get everywhere, more or less on time and in one piece, if not exactly comfortably. So, okay, uh, sometime in the middle of all of this, Shirima calls me and she's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, Seku called you, uh, but now he's on tour, so um, yeah, no CDs. Uh, okay, yeah, fine, cool. All right, anyway, so uh, did he give you dates? Yeah, he gave me some, David gave me some. He's like, all right, so what, what the rest of the dates? So what have you got? Blah, 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 I don't know, 6th or 7th of May, blah, 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 some time. There was one date you could There's Croatia on, there's this one date you can't do. So eventually, eventually, it's back up to Nottingham, <laughs> for which I thought it was like, okay, cool, I've got yeah, the Yeah, did you know the tradition? It was yeah. half an hour after I got there. <laughs> <laughs> we got there and we're chatting music. Blah, blah, blah. The relationship between the quartet's members is lively and cooperative, with different personalities complementing each other. Discussion is always open, whether it be about music or other matters, and some of the musicians are obviously more vocal than others. Bloody new. Bloody new. I didn't know it was an audition, no man. Well, but maybe. First thing I know I'm about an audition. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. First thing I know about an audition is everyone going, oh, I don't suppose you got a microphone or something so we can record this. And I can record this. He's like, yeah, the manager wants to listen to it later. Listen to it. We get it.
Jules, how are you? Good day, Shinema. How are you? What is your job here? I'm in charge of the performing schedule at Just For You in Dakar. What made you program the Sekouke Da Quartet here in Dakar? I knew them and their music, and we don't have many opportunities to hear our Senegalese compatriots who live abroad and produce great music playing live here. Besides, it doesn't happen too often to have a Senegalese artist who comes back with the music that is unexpected and new so we must do all we can to promote it. That's why, when I heard that Seku was coming here, I thought I couldn't miss the opportunity to organize something. There are many occasions when there is a lull in activity between performances or waiting to travel. But entertainment is never far away. Amazing, isn't it? And here they are, back in the van. Travel plays an important part in my musical life. I have been touring internationally since 1996. I have performed in many countries, in Europe, in Canada, USA, Australia, and even Asia, Singapore, and India. But going back to Africa with my band was definitely an emotional journey because it brought back a lot of memories from my childhood. to Dakar, a straightforward 200-mile journey with a river crossing, was a typical example of the practical difficulties you can encounter traveling in Africa. It took 14 hours to complete, seven of which were spent waiting for the ferry. So they waited and waited and waited.
do you find it frustrating that maybe me and Daradeo as innately we, we don't we don't know say southern breaks. We we don't it's not part of our vocabulary. To us mm. it seems very illogical. Mm. And like the pulses are in strange places. Mm. Rhythmically it's very alien. Okay, it's becoming less alien as we play more, yeah. we hear more, we see members of your family playing, yeah. maybe the same songs differently, we do learn. Mm. But do you, do you find it hard trying to <clears throat> sometimes explain what you want from us or just in terms I've, of... I've, to be honest, I'd rather take this question back to you two, you know. The quote is very young, mm. you know, when we, the more we play together, the more we settle. It, take, it will take a while, but we, we, we developed a lot, yeah. you know, from you know, scratch from day one. So this is a question I will ask you guys. <laughs> there you go, it's not easy, man. Some, some elements of the music feel a lot more natural now. Yeah. Like just in terms of, say, in the beginning it was a question of forget about where's the one, what is happening? Why is this happening? I don't understand. Where, how are you? Is it in three? Is it in four? Is it in six? And for me, one of, one of the most telling moments was in one of the sound checks and I was asking you about one of the tunes. And I said, is it in three, four, six, eight or twelve? And you know, he does. He goes, well, all of them really. <laughs> And that, that was a real breakthrough moment for me. That was like, okay. Actually, for me, coming to Africa uh, a few times, to Senegal a few times, I learned to switch off the that kind of rational man who tells, okay, divide this and write this down, and just play and play and play until it becomes natural. <laughs> Well, the next song, I would like to invite a very special... With so much talent in his family, Seku couldn't it's resist inviting someone to join the quartet on stage. For this tour, he chose Binta Susu, his young sister. Another example of an African artist who is developing a personal style rooted in tradition but colored by different accents. Binta. My own sister, Binta Susu.
certain rhythms, some members of the audience would step up on stage and show their dancing skills in a brief but intense moment of participation with the music. Others would dance in their own corner, always showing the artists that they connect with their music with a kind of participation that is often overwhelming. acceptable signal, members of the audience would join the group on stage and, without further ado, break into song, singing the praise of the griot, his family and musicians. <laughs> I'm 
bamba tu bamba ke bamba 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 wo bamba So is the voice a really crucial part of Senegalese music, is it? It is, it is. So it is a lot of fun. When a player play, they're waiting for the words. They're waiting for the prayer by somebody who's opposite sitting, waiting, or clapping, or giving money. So they're waiting for his name to be heard. wonder what happens on stage when you know this, this family friends of yours or even people like the, the lady from Guinea yeah people yeah. outside the family they are invited on stage mm -hmm. to sing mm -hmm. <laughs> It looks like they're singing something about you, your family, and all the the people related to you, yeah. and that creates some sort of uh, ritualistic um, greeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People come on stage to dance, sing, or play, to show their appreciation to the band. They wouldn't come if they didn't like the music. Some singers will come and praise the caters, my family, just because I'm a descendant of this royal family. <laughs> professional singers, some are just, you know, not well known. Yeah. So they want to be part of the particular Thanksgiving? Or Thanksgiving, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Refreshingly, musicians in West Africa don't seem to be overly precious about the sanctity of musical arrangement. On the spur of the moment, musicians are invited to participate in each other's sets with no prior rehearsal.
Have you had any chance to hear the concerts? Yes, I have seen the concert and had heard some of the songs from the website. In fact, I have followed for years what Seku does in Europe and around the world. I have seen how he grew and how original his music has become. Knowing the Chora, this new development and style are quite exciting, with the combination of violin and bass, plus the unusual use of percussion. It has all the elements of tradition, but is also modern, with the West African rhythm combined with the influences from elsewhere. We never see this live. Well, our aim was to present the music from Senegal, which travelled to Europe. But now, coming back to Senegal, we noticed that many people were quite surprised at first with what they heard. Do you think the quartet could integrate with the Senegalese music scene? Sure, there is a real need for more and new music here. People buy CDs, they listen to all sorts of music from all over the world, as long as it's good. So when something new and Senegalese becomes known and available, people are very happy and interested. Sometimes the problem is that the music industry here isn't well established yet, and even finding information about artists or listening to their music is often difficult as there is no distribution nor professional resources. So it's often those who have a chance to travel who find this information about music and bring it back home. This was an extraordinary journey, full of challenges, full of adventures. But those challenges are part of the touring conditions that would be faced in any other country, whether in the West or otherwise. Only Senegal's challenges are more exotic, like not being sure that the power connections would actually work, safety considerations aside, or whether the van would turn up, or if the hard sound system would even function. The idea behind this project was for Seku to present his music for the first time in Senegal. His story is the same as that of many other musicians who come from all over the world to make a career and a new life in the UK. While being a proponent of Senegalese music, he represents both Senegal, his natural country, and the UK, his adoptive one. Having performed extensively in Senegal with many other artists from the region in the past, he had yet to perform as an artist in his own right. He needed to go back home and face the scrutiny of his family, his friends, his fellow musicians and the general public. The reaction of the Senegalese audience and musicians was generally of surprise at first, followed by interest and then excitement. This is the same reaction that the quartet receives most of the time from its Western audience. In recent years, worldwide audiences have been exposed to a much wider selection of musical genres and have developed a taste for a more varied musical range. Things are changing on a daily basis and people are continually discovering new music. It will be interesting to see what the result will be in a few years and what music will grow out of these meetings of cultures. These changes have started to benefit the countries where the various musical languages originally came from and we hope this is just the beginning of it. For sure, the quartet will continue its journey and strengthen the relationship with Senegal, hopefully extending it to the rest of the African continent and beyond. How this will materialize, only time will tell.
Tell you what up, Billy Lipuna Malibola.